This recipe for these healthy carob brownies, mm -hmm. this actually used to be a favorite recipe that I would share when I lived in Australia. And I even made it for some of my students mm -hmm. when I used to be a high school teacher. So it is, I, I guess they're not cakey, but it's mm -hmm. teenager approved. Dude, yeah. yeah, young adults so, approved. Yes. Can we put that right in the Yes, middle? this is the <laughs> recipe right here for those of you who would like to follow along. It's d2e.co slash carob brownies. Yeah. Yeah. Healthy carob brownies, but, but that's not in the yeah. web address. <laughs> but they are healthy. Yeah. Really, truly. They're actually very, yeah, they're, they're pretty low in fat. Mm -hmm. uh, so for anyone who is following a lower fat diet, mm. this is a great recipe if you want a sweet treat. And there's, they're very allergy friendly. Mm -hmm. No refined sugar, no gluten, no, well, optional nuts, mm -hmm. but you can actually sub things and I'll let you know about those substitutions mm -hmm. during the recipe. Nice. How are we going with viewers? Have we've, we got some viewers we've on? We've got a couple now. So Great. if anyone's just joined us, Cece's going to make, can you put that back there? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Our healthy carob brownies. Healthy carob brownies. And that is the recipe address d2e.co slash carob brownies. You can follow along. I will be making the full recipe for this demo. Okay. All right, Great. I think we can get started. Okay, so first things first, you do want to preheat your oven, 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And I always like to line my pan in advance. This is a nine by five inch baking pan, but you know, you'll, you'll kind of gauge depending on how much brownie you're making. So this will make roughly 16 small squares. But if you want to make larger brownies, you might want to use a larger pan like an, a nine by nine and mm -hmm. maybe double the recipe yeah. or one and a half times. I always find that's the trickiest part of baking, actually figuring out, especially with brownies mm -hmm. or cakes or yeah. things like that, figuring out the best pan for your recipe. So line your pan and then we're going to add, we're going to whisk together our wet ingredients first. Our first ingredient is maple syrup. I'm using this maple syrup here. Mm -hmm. This is a cool maple syrup. It's actually from a family farm on the mainland. We love to support small family farms and they actually are really engaged in sustainable farming. So there's our maple syrup. As a substitute, if you want a more island taste, I know that, I know maple syrup is usually associated with like <laughs> Canada. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this is a more tropical kind of unrefined sweetener. This is our coconut nectar. Surprising actually that I'm not using this in today's mm -hmm. recipe. <laughs> um, but coconut nectar is also unrefined. It's just the sap that comes from coconut blossoms. So if you look up and ever see coconut blossoms at the top of a coconut palm tree, that's where the coconut nectar mm -hmm. comes from. It's great, it's a real, real low GI sweetener. And then I'm going to put some applesauce in. Again, this is an unsweetened applesauce. Actually, this applesauce is just apples. That's it. There's mm -hmm. one ingredient, organic apples. This is actually my favorite one, also because it comes in a nice glass jar, which you can reuse. So I'm going to put my applesauce in here. Mm -hmm. And actually, applesauce is a great substitute for eggs. If you're ever wanting to bake egg free, mm -hmm. applesauce is wonderful. Another thing you can add to help hold your mixture together, if you're not using eggs, if you're baking without eggs, is flax meal. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put some flax meal in there as well. And sometimes you probably saw, you've probably seen on some of our, um, some of our cooking demos that we often use flax eggs. And today I'm not using a flax egg, but I am using the flax for the same purpose. And that is to hold it all together. So I'm just going to start to whisk it. You don't actually have to whisk it yet, mm -hmm. but I just want to start to whisk it to start combining. And then my next ingredient that I'm going to add this is very, very important to make your brownies nice and rich. We're actually not using any oil in these brownies. These are oil-free, refined sugar-free, gluten-free, vegan, healthy carob <laughs> brownies. That sounds very bougie, but yeah. it's, it's an awesome <laughs> brownie recipe. 
It so pudding sounds super healthy. Yes, so exactly. So you're like brownies healthy. Mm, I know it doesn't compute. How is that possible? But this is actually a healthy brownie recipe. So I'm just adding this almond butter as the fat mm -hmm. source for this recipe instead of usually. You know, I used to often make brownies with coconut oil, but I started using the almond butter instead. Mm -hmm. And I really like the nutty flavor that it adds as well. As I said earlier, if you are allergic to nuts and you don't want to use an almond butter or a peanut butter, this almond butter came from, it's my favorite almond butter. It comes from our bulk department and you, you can actually see the almonds go through this little chute and they get pressed and ground into almond butter. We also have bulk peanut butter, cashew butter, but if you want to use something else like a seed, you can also try using sunflower seed butter. We also have that. And even if you like the taste of tahini, you can use tahini. Mm. So as long as you have that, that fat source. Okay, so it looks like my almond butter is pretty evenly distributed. I'm gonna put a little bit of vanilla extract mm -hmm. or vanilla flavoring as well so you can also substitute the vanilla flavoring with if you actually have uh fresh not fresh but un pure vanilla i guess mm -hmm. the vanilla bean. yeah the vanilla bean or mm -hmm. or um some of our stores have vanilla paste mm -hmm. as well you can use that if you like I find that the van vanilla flavoring is the easiest. And now we're going to add our flour and our carob powder in. So the flour I'm using is a sorghum flour. Sorghum is a whole grain, it's a gluten-free grain. And it act I find that it actually behaves really similarly to wheat. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to cook wheat with wheat and I used to include wheat in my baking but um, I haven't included it for about 11 or 12 years now and I find that sorghum I've tried a lot of different flowers probably sorghum and buckwheat mm -hmm. are the closest behaving mm. to regular wheat right so if you are looking for a good gluten-free flour, I really recommend sorghum you can use it substitute it for whole wheat flours one to one I found that works pretty well. And then I'm going to put some toasted carob powder in. Oh, toasted. So, yeah, so we actually sell a couple of different carob powders. We have one that is raw, and mm -hmm. it's actually from the Australian Carob Company. Hey. Yay, represent. <laughs> um, I never thought I would shuck her while I'm representing Australia, but you know. And then, um, and the other one is this toasted one, wow. which I find to actually be a little more flavorful than, cool. the, than the raw one. So it, I find that the flavor really, really comes out with the toasted one. So I prefer using the toasted in baking because mm. mm. it just is a lot richer. But one thing you'll notice, you might even see on my apron, this one is actually very messy to use, the toasted. Mm. So what you want to do is just be very careful when you're mixing it in. But I really love mixing in carob powder for the brownie mix because it just does that color change and you yeah. see it become that really nice flavor fudgy looking I just love this mm -hmm. I could watch this someone needs to make a YouTube video of this and I will just watch this just watch this over yeah it again. just I don't know if you're drooling <laughs> yet you should be drooling already <laughs> oh, this got some comments you had a aloha from Santa Fe New Mexico oh aloha, aloha. welcome and then Patrick is asking what about using carob syrup Oh, Double carob. Great. Yes. You know what? You could use a little bit of the carob syrup um, actually before you add the, the, dry, the dry ingredients. Mm. You could use a little bit of carob syrup and then you probably would just add a little bit more flour just so you have still some dry in there because mm -hmm. the, the carob powder does take up some of the bulk. Yeah. So, so yeah, definitely use carob, carob syrup. We actually sell the carob syrup. Yeah. Maybe that's where you got it from. <laughs> that, would be, that would be the Australian carob company carob syrup. Again, just representing over here. <laughs> So yeah, so we get that beautiful color change. And for those of you who might be wondering what in the world is carob, carob is actually, it comes from, this powder comes from basically a pod. So what happens is the, they toast the pods and then they grind them up and you get this carob uh, powder, mm -hmm. which is great. Nice. Yeah, um, it's, it's an alternative to chocolate. So you can substitute cocoa powder if you want, but mm -hmm. carob 
carob is great for a low fat al al alternative okay. because cocoa often has fat. Is there a question? Yes. Um, oh, and also, does carob have caffeine? Because chocolate has natural caffeine. Yes, great question. So chocolate has a little bit of caffeine, mm -hmm. a tiny amount, but it also has another stimulant in it called theobromin. So I know that I am actually quite sensitive to it. I, I used to eat a lot of chocolate and um, I didn't actually, I was a little bit sensitive to the theobromin in the chocolate, but I find that with carob, I don't have any mm -hmm. kind of reaction. Mm -hmm. So that's why I usually use carob instead right. of the chocolate, but yeah. And then um, Sherry suggested that vanilla stevia is also awesome. Yes, we love a yes! good vanilla stevia. Wow, Sherry. what a great, yeah, great and suggestion. someone asked, what if I only have carob chips? Oh, great question. Okay, so if you want to use carob chips instead of the carob powder, then what you can do is you can actually melt down the carob chips. It's mm -hmm. really easy. You use a double boiler method where you put a, a heat safe glass bowl. So just check that it's oven safe. You put this over a saucepan and you just put about an inch of water in the saucepan and then mm -hmm. set it to boiling and put your glass bowl over the mm -hmm. top, put your carob chips in there mm -hmm. and then you just melt them down that mm -hmm. way. So and it's then like what you said earlier, because it has a little extra liquid, you're going to need yes. a little bit more of the sorghum flour. Yes, a little bit more of the sorghum. Yeah. That's right. Or you can even put a little bit extra flax. Mm -hmm. Really just experiment to see, because, you know, often yeah. everybody has different tastes for what kind of consistency yeah. they like in a brownie. I just added a little bit of salt. Some people might think that's strange. I find the salt really balances out the carob, the sweetness of the carob, because carob is naturally sweet. Cocoa is is cacao is bitter mm -hmm. but carob is naturally very sweet and there's obviously the maple syrup and the apple sauce in there so i put a little bit of salt to balance it out and to bring out the mm -hmm. natural flavors as well so i put some salt in there and the next thing i'm going to do we actually did a poll on our instagram to find out <laughs> whether people prefer to put nuts in their brownies or not yeah. <laughs> and we were overwhelmed by the response. You yep. guys feel very passionately <laughs> about this. So we found that about 75% of people do like putting nuts yeah. in their brownies, which is why I am including it in today's demo. Thanks. Sorry for the 25% who voted against it. That's me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's why it is an optional step right. on the recipe. Yeah. You don't have to put these in. In fact, if you wanted to make it more tastes more like carob, you could do what our friend suggested early. You could actually put some carob chips nice. in there, as is. All right, tell us in um, the comments, are you team nuts or team no nuts? Yes, <laughs> let us know. I really love putting walnuts um, mm -hmm. or pecans into, mm -hmm. the, into brownies. Yeah. So I'm going to put these in here. And as I was saying earlier, consistency does make a difference. Everyone has their own idea of you know, what a brownie should taste like. I like my brownies to be very dense. Mm -hmm. In fact, I like all my baked goods to have a very dense kind of consistency and mm -hmm. texture to them. So I actually, you'll notice in the recipe, I haven't put baking powder into this recipe. If you would like it to have a little bit more of a cake-like consistency mm -hmm. and rise a little bit, I would put a teaspoon of yeah. baking powder in. But yeah. If you like that kind of dense brownie really fudgy consistency, brownie. Yes, a very rich fudgy consistency, then, then no need for the baking powder. Nice. And the last thing, I'm going to leave that till late actually, that will be my garnish, but there you can see our brownie batter. It's nice and gooey. Oh. I Ooh. can actually just eat this. Yeah. I was just about <laughs> to say, forget baking this. Let's right? just scoop it up and eat it though. yeah i mean that's the amazing thing about vegan baking when you're not using you know eggs you can actually just it's eat the batter safe. right yeah. okay so what i'm going to do now i'm going to tip this into yep. into my i'm gonna try and place this over here and tip this into my pan hope you can all see this all right there we go there's that mm. gooiness and again, you can also choose to use a smaller or larger pan. This makes a very flat, uh, not flat, thin brownie. Mm -hmm. But if you prefer a thicker one, then feel free to, to use a smaller pan and it'll come out thicker. Okay, 
So then I usually just like to give it a couple of taps and that really allows it to kind of even out. Kind of just tap it like this, put this over here, tap it and then you can see that it sort of fills the paper a little bit more. Really important to make sure you have baking paper on the edges. You live and mm -hmm. you learn, and <laughs> I have learned. Make sure it's good so that you can just pull it out yeah. really easily. Very important. Yes. So that's our batter in our pan, and I'm going to put this on the side here. I will probably bake it later. 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30-ish minutes. Mm -hmm. Again, depending on what kind of dryness, moistness you prefer. I put it in for about 30 minutes and then I usually just turn it off for the last five minutes. I turn the oven off, but I keep the, the brownies in there for the last five-ish minutes. Okay, and here's one that I prepared earlier. Yeah. This is what it looks like. And see, this is, this is why oh, Auntie Cece taught you to do this. Because <laughs> it comes over here and it's much easier to chop. So you can see this is a pretty thin brownie. Yeah. This was in a 9 by 5 pan. And look, it's so nice and moist. I okay. can tell that it's going to be really fudgy. Yes, exactly. So I'm going to slice it this way. Oh, yum. Sorry, I'm getting, <laughs> getting very happy already. <laughs> And then I'm going to slice it this way. This mm -hmm. is still a little bit warm. That's why it's kind of, you can see it's sticking to my knife a little. Mm -hmm. If you wait a little bit longer, you'll actually, and you can cut it however, whatever size you want. If you want a smaller brownie, bite-sized mm -hmm. brownies, or if you want larger, if you want really big ones, <laughs> go for it. And then, oh, I pulled out a walnut there. Over here. Okay. And then what I like to do is I've got some red alea salt here. This is sea salt from Hawaii. And I'm going to actually sprinkle some as garnish. I really like the taste of the salt with the sweetness. So I just sprinkle some over the top, maybe a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that little nice salty touch right at the top really yes. sets off the carob. Right. Now, you can decide whether you're a corner person or whether you're a middle person. I like the corners only because I find that the corners get really crispy. Mm -hmm. you, can tell, you can tell us in the comments as well. Are you a corner person or are you a middle person? I'm I a, really... the whole brownie person. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so I'm going to give this a bite. Now put the oh, You can see. Can you see that? Look how fudgy it is. Yum. Yum. Okay, let me try this. And you know what? I was thinking while you're eating that, of putting like, even though I don't really enjoy nuts mm. and brownies, if you put the nuts and then maybe even put extra carob chips. Mm -hmm. So you have a double yes. chocolate. Yes, absolutely. Oh, I just got a salt hit as well. Nice. Tastes so good. This is so rich and delicious. <laughs> Honestly. Everyone is, is the... team corner. Yeah. Oh yeah, the corners. corners! Yay! Awesome! Sorry I cut you off. It was really rich and delicious. Yes. I was just going to say it's the best brownie I've ever tasted. Nice. Every time I make this is the best brownie I've ever <laughs> tasted. So if you want to grab these ingredients, very, very easy to do so. So you can actually just go to the recipe, d2e.co slash carob brownies. Mm -hmm. And the main ingredients are in the shopping list there. There are some other things that you probably already have at home. Mm -hmm. The main ingredients are on the shopping list or you can head over to downtoearth.org slash shop and that will direct you to all of the, the online stores for each of our stores actually. So that's downtoearth.org slash shop and you can select curbside pickup or delivery. Lots of options for you. And also we have our DTE Deli app so that is, you can either download the app on any app store, DTE Deli app, or you can go to order.downtoearth.org. If there are no other questions, any other questions about any of the recipe, no, no questions. Thank you for letting us know that you are all corners people. <laughs> you are my people. <laughs> Even if you don't like corners, please please make this recipe and don't forget to tag us. If you do make it, tag us if you post it on Instagram, 
Facebook, tag us with hashtag cook with us and hashtag down to earth HI. We would love to see your creations. We want to see you making this delicious food. Thanks so much for joining us and please join us again on Friday on Instagram and next Tuesday right here on Facebook. Nice. Thank you and aloha. Bye.